And the story that comes to my mind, and it, it, it's really mind blowing because when we're looking at the hardship and the ease, we always, again, we say, why is it that this person who's a disbeliever, who's, 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 who speaks ill about the deen, who does this and that, why is it that this person has such an easy life? And why is it that that believer has such a difficult life? I'm gonna throw a curveball at you guys, all right? Let's switch the occasion around. Let's, let's actually switch the equation. Here's the, here's the, the scenario. How many of you have heard of Al-Hafidh ibn Hajar al-Asqalani, rahimahullah ta'ala? You know, Tuesday nights at Valley Ranch, we do Fath al-Bari, we do the explanation of Sahih al-Bukhari, the most famous, the most famous uh, uh, scholar who explains Sahih al-Bukhari is this man, Ibn Hajar al-Asqalani. Great, great, great scholar. You know what else? He was rich. He used to dress elegantly. And he became the Qadi of Egypt. He became the judge of Egypt, the great judge of Egypt, of Masr. And imagine this scenario. Ibn Hajar is walking in the marketplace. The guy is incredibly handsome. He's a good looking man. He's scholarly. You know, he's dressed well. He lives well. He has position in society. And he's walking in the marketplace. And there is a non-Muslim that's selling oil that's used for the lamps. And he's in shabby clothes. And he looks at Ibn Hajar. And he says to him, Ya Shaykh, O oh scholar. He says what? He said, didn't your Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam say that a dunya sijnul mu'min wa jannatul kafir? This world is a prison for the believer and a paradise for the disbeliever? He said, yes. He said, so what jannah am I in and what prison are you in? Seriously, look at me and look at you. I reject Allah. I'm, you know, and he was actually someone that was openly rejecting Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. I reject Allah. I reject God. I don't care about this stuff. I don't care about your religion. And I'm living in this misery, in these shabby clothes, trying to make way, selling oil for people's lamps. And you, mashallah, scholar, alim, la hijrata ba'd al fatih. There is no, there is no explanation after Bukhari, after your explanation, apparently. You're amazing. And you live like this? What prison are you in? And what Jannah am I in? Seriously. The equation has been switched. The disbeliever is asking the believer, how come you live so well and I live so bad if the Prophet ﷺ said that it's supposed to be the opposite? And Ibn Hajar rahimahullah, he responded, and he says, Ana binisbati lima arjuhu fil akhirati min na'eemin ka'anni fi sijin. He said, as for me, Comparing that which I have to that which I expect from Allah in the hereafter, I feel like I'm in a prison. SubhanAllah. That which I expect and desire and that which I hope Allah will give me in the hereafter, I feel like I'm in a prison. He says, وَأَنْتَ بِنِسْبَةِ لِمَا يُعَدُّ مِنَ الْعَذَابِ لِأَمْثَارِكَ كَأَنَّكَ فِي جَحِيمٍ أو كَأَنَّكَ فِي جَنَّةٍ He said, and as for you, in regards to that which Allah has promised for people like you that reject Him and that do all sorts of things, that which you're in right now is a Jannah. And the man started to cry. And he came to Ibn Hajar rahimahullah ta'ala and he actually accepted Islam. said, Ashhadu an la ilaha illallah wa ashhadu anna Muhammad Rasulullah. Okay, I get it. I get it. What that means is that a dunya sijnul mu'min that the world is a prison for the believer does not mean does not mean that the believer is inherently unhappy and depressed in this world what it means is that the believer has so much expectation of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in the hereafter and the believer is so tied to Allah and his husn of one billah his good expectation of Allah is so sky high and his connection to Allah and the, an abandoning of the temporary pleasures of this world is so sky high that he's, he's walking through it and with the ease that comes to him, he says, Alhamdulillah, and I will not be deluded by the ease in this world to think this is Jannah. And he restricts himself from the prohibited things. He's imprisoned from the prohibited means of living out his shahawat, of living out his desires. Whereas the person on the other side who continues to reject Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and still lives a harsh life, 
even if Allah gave that person a palace, they would still be unhappy. They would still be in their own Jannah, but in the spiritual sense, they'd be in a prison. So yes, a dunya sijn al mu'min, the dunya is a prison for the believer, but make no mistake about it, dear brothers and sisters. The one who connects himself to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in this dunya and sees through its flimsy nature is the happiest person in the world.